Hello students, Ms. Swanson here, and today we're going to take a look at the properties of covalent compounds. Now this picture here shows the intermolecular forces between different covalent compounds. Now we're not going to study the intermolecular forces, but we are going to take a look at the, the properties and the characteristics that are caused by these intermolecular forces. So we have one learning goal for today, to describe the properties of covalent compounds. So first of all, let's just review the different types of bonds. So we'll start off with the bottom right here where we have the ionic bonds. We've already taken a look at the properties of ionic bonds and we can remember that ionic bonds form when an electron transfers from one atom to another. And then we have the nonpolar covalent compounds at the top. The nonpolar covalent compounds happen when two elements share their electrons and that brings them together. And that sharing is equal. So each of the electrons being shared is equally shared between the two different atoms. Then on the bottom left, we have the polar covalent compounds. These are also covalent, so caused by a sharing of electrons, only the sharing is uneven. So one atom pulls the electrons in a little bit stronger, so they spend a little bit more time around that atom, which causes it to be slightly negatively charged. It's not a full negative charge like the ions and the ionic compounds, but it's slightly negative charged. And then the other atom, which has the electron sort of being pulled away from it a little bit more than average becomes slightly positively charged. So the properties of, of covalent compounds. So first of all, they can exist as solids, liquids, or gases at room temperature. Now, it depends on the type of covalent bond, whether it's polar or nonpolar, which type of a solid, liquid, or gas it will actually be. So if it's polar, it's more likely to be solid or liquid, and if it's nonpolar, it's more likely to be a gas. Why is this? Well, it's similar to what we saw with the ionic bonds. When you have charges in there, so that would be caused by the polar covalent compounds, the positives and negatives are sort of attracted together, and so they form a big glob of compounds. And so that is a lot harder to pull apart than compounds that are spread out and don't have any sort of interactions between them. They don't have any attraction between them. So if it's a non-polar covalent compound, each molecule is not really that interested in the other molecules molecules around it, so it's more likely to move about freely, whereas the polar covalent compounds are more likely to be attracted to each other and become either a liquid or a solid. They have low melting points and low boiling points. Again, this has to do with whether um, something is uh, polar covalent or nonpolar covalent. Um, and it also relates a little bit to the ionic properties that we already looked at. So for the polar covalent compounds, they have the attractive forces of the slightly negative and slightly positive um, ends of the polar covalent compounds. So they're more likely to hold together a little bit longer before they turn into a liquid or until the liquids turn into gases. But that attraction is not nearly as strong as the ions that we have in the ionic compounds, which hold very tightly. So because it's a loose connection, or in the case of nonpolar covalent compounds, there's really not a lot of attraction between the different molecules. It's much easier to pull them apart and turn it from a solid into a liquid or from a liquid into a gas, which means we don't need to input a lot of, of heat. We don't have a high temperature in order to make that transition. The next is that they are soluble in nonpolar liquids, but rarely in water. So what happens is because water is polar, it has a slightly positive and slightly negative end, nonpolar compounds, which have all neutral areas around them, are not interested in being near charged areas. So they're more likely to group together with other nonpolar compounds and separate away from the water. So this is something you would see with oil and water. Oil has a lot of nonpolar areas, so it's more likely to clump together and separate out away from the water. The polar covalent compounds might interact a little bit with the water, but not nearly as strongly as what we would see with the ionic compounds, where the, the positive charges and the negative charges are completely surrounded by the water molecules. 
And then they're poor conductors of electricity in all phases of so solid, liquid, gas. They tend to be poor conductors of electricity. And this is because they don't form ions, and ions are required to move the electric charge around. So with ionic compounds, when they are dissolved in water, you have the positive and negative charges that can move freely and transfer an electric charge. With covalent compounds, because all of the different atoms stay stuck together, they don't dissolve into ions, there's nothing to carry that charge. So we have one learning goal today to describe the properties of covalent compounds. If you can do this, fantastic. If not, please re-watch the video. And if you're still having trouble, come ask me in class tomorrow. Alright, that's all for now. Bye-bye.